people welcome back that's a long time since the last time <laughs> welcome back to my channel then let's have a cup of coffee and talk a bit about my lovely silver fox there oh that was hot Ooh. put it down here watch the paint watch the paint but um let's cut the crap <laughs> Oh, careful, watch the paint, say hello to uh, Silver Wolf, look, careful, watch the paint, watch the paint, good stuff. So, let me tell you about my Evo 6, I've had a couple of issues on this lovely rally car and I've been trying to find out what is causing them so that is what I wanted to uh, talk about in this video um, the first issue or both issues actually is very common in the Lancer Evo world the first thing that uh, I started to um, notice was that I had a diesel rattle uh, and grinding sound that came when you were driving say 50 miles an hour in fourth gear and you let off the gas and you hear like this like <laughs> uh, sound coming from the front drive line area uh, look at the boost gauge for reference to see when the car is on diesel so vacuum is diesel obviously And it went away as soon as you hit the throttle again. So it's on D cell. Uh, I started noticing this after I did a lot of servicing work, like replaced the oil on the complete drive line and stuff. Um, I also did replace the exhaust system though. By the way, that exhaust system is not what I was told it was. I'm pretty sure I was told that this was some kind of HKS something. So it could have been that, that I didn't hear it before. And it also takes a while from when you get a new car until you know the ins and outs of the car. And that can also be a thing that it was there all the time, but I didn't notice it until later. I've searched online on forums, like trying to find out, is there a common thing or, or, or stuff? And <laughs> there's people that replaced and overhauled transmission, transfer case, rear diffs, and they still have the same diesel noise. But often it's hard to know what a, a person defines as a certain sound. Uh, some people are talking about a diesel rattle and they talking also about a whining sound, which is obviously a bearing. Uh, in my car, it's only a rattle, a grinding sound, like there's no tone to it. It's mainly and purely a There's no you know? <laughs> what I also did as a part of my uh, diagnostic plan was to change out the oils in the driveline. I put 75W140 in the transfer case and in the rear diff. Didn't do much to the whole sound of the driveline. Um, by the way, the driveline is not noisy. Like there's no bearing noise or, or anything. So everything is in good working order. It shifts gears very nice and, and, and all that. So yesterday I did change the oil in the gearbox and I swapped it out for 85W140, which is not what it says in the manual, but I was gonna try that as a part of my diagnostic plan to see if I could rule out um, anything internal in the gearbox and there was not much of a difference and that brings me to the next issue that i wanted to tell you about and that was the feeling of a very vibrating engine it felt very noisy when revving it up past 4000 revs which is basically the same rev range as the diesel rattle uh, appears so i was trying to connect those two uh, issues there um, the uh, engine vibration was not noticeable when driving normal, even on startup when cold or hot or whatever. It just ran like normal. When you don't have any 
um, reference points in a way. I didn't really notice it until I was thinking about one thing. And that was that the timing belt and balance belt had been replaced. There is a balance shaft, two actually, in this engine. So let me explain a bit. In this engine here, you have a rear balance shaft and a front balance shaft. The front balance shaft is the one that is tricky and often talked about actually when dealing with vibrating engine and, and stuff like that. I have seen this mentioned many times on forums. So with this car having its timing belt and balance belt replaced 600 kilometers before I took over the ownership of the car, this was what I was thinking about when dealing with this issue myself. So I decided to check the timing belt and the balance belt. How you check it when everything is mounted is you will need to remove the cam belt cover here. You put your engine in on the correct timing marks and that is like the cam um, pulley needs to be aligned there and the timing mark there. Crank pulley also have its timing mark on the front cover. Remove this cover and uh, remove the spark plug so you know that the engine is at top dead center at cylinder one. So what you proceed to do then is to remove a bolt that's located under the turbo. It's a 14 millimeter, you unscrew that one. And you use a screwdriver as a special tool to insert into that hole. And if your balance shaft, oil pump shaft is aligned correctly, you should be able to insert the tool at least 60 millimeters into that hole. If you cannot insert the special tool, then you have an incorrect balance shaft or oil pump shaft set. And I indeed find it to be incorrect. It's only that first portion of this rod I can put in. So that means that the balance shaft thingy is blocking that hole, meaning it's not in its correct position. Timing is set there. There it's on the timing mark. And there it is on the timing mark. So they kind of did the right thing, but they didn't know how this worked. They just thought that this can only stand in one place, but that's not the case. It can stand 180 degrees incorrect or 360 degrees incorrect. So now I have to turn this around one revolution. It was not set correctly. So I took stuff apart, corrected everything, I have now removed the belt from the belt drives in a way and I am now timing up this front balance shaft and this is how it was located. I just uh, got my camera rolling and you can see when you do like this, or you can't actually, but you can see it falls this way. Now it falls against against the timing, you can see. My balance shaft is timed correctly, you can see. So just for the fun of it, I'm gonna see if I can get my tool in. Yeah, you can see. So earlier I could just get it that first, that first uh, thing there. Good stuff. We have a balance shaft timing issue. No good. <laughs> but it's good to find out. I definitely had a front balance shaft that was out of sync. So that leaves more vibration than if you do what is often done by people to remove the balance shaft. It makes everything worse. It's a counter react now. Now it's like making vibrations because everything is out of sync. The engine now runs super smooth. 
I mean, when I rub it now, it's like a katana sword through butter. It's like silky smooth. It revs like it wants to rev, you know? Uh, before I could rev it, like it would go to 7,000, but you really didn't want to go to 7,000 because it was shaking. Like, so with this being corrected, I think that my diesel rattle has to do with something regarding to rotating mass. And that leads me to the most common mentioned thing when dealing with or reading about this diesel rattle issues that people are experiencing. Most of them are mentioning lightened flywheels and upgraded clutches. My car does indeed have a lightened flywheel and an upgraded clutch, but it's just an XCD stage one single plate, like a normal clutch. It isn't like the twin plate clutch that is often referred to when dealing with these uh, rattle sounds. But either way, as long as I have a light and flywheel in and a XCD stage one clutch that is on 35,000 kilometers now, I think it would be a good thing to replace that flywheel with a new clutch to see if that solves the D cell rattle. The culprit is not within the gearbox, I think. It is an imbalance thing that is caused by less rotational mass from, say, a lightened flywheel. That could very much be the case. And in many ways, that is the simplest fix and see how far that brings me. Hopefully it will sort it out. At least I'm on my way to try to find the source for this uh, issue. So also just an ending thing here. Uh, the sound is 60% better after dealing with the imbalance in the timing belt. So <clears throat> that's why I'm saying that I think it has to do with rotational mass. Uh, the other thing is that the thick oil in the gearbox is not an advisable thing to do as far as I know, but I did it purely from a diagnostic point of view, just to rule out if the noise was uh, different or not. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you liked the video. See you guys later. Bye bye bye. See ya. Yes! FIFA! Don't for and for shell. God! Holy Maloney, what a difference! I can't freaking feel the engine! Like, really? Fee! Pocka! Fan forskjell! Det er en ny bil! Det er en ny bil!